All right, we're moving towards an expanded conversation about this Twitter bias thing because I've explained it a lot. You've probably seen me explain it in the videos exactly how simply you can show the bias on Twitter. We actually have a tweet from Jack. Okay, so the other night, uh, I believe it was the other night, Kara Swisher, who is like a tech journalist personality, was having a was engaging in a Twitter thread with Jack. Okay, and I'll just show you a little bit of this real quick, and then I want to go through my tweet and the things we, we we've got. Uh, the responses and, and critiques. So first, you have Kara Swisher tweeting at Jack, hashtag Kara and Jack, and they're talking about what they're doing to solve problems. One of the big criticisms here is that Jack is really good at what they say is pirouetting around tough questions and not actually answering anything. What's fascinating about this Twitter thread is this comes from the perspective of Jack, ban more people, ban more people. That's what they're, that's what they're saying. You're not banning enough people. Okay, listen, you already have the edge, okay, for your calls for banning people. It didn't work. They're banning specific people. So Jack responds to Kara Switcher. She, she, uh, she asked, please give me three con- concrete things you have done to fix this. Specific. He said, we have evolved our policies. We have prioritized proactive enforcement to remove burden from victims. We have given more control in product, like mutative accounts with profile pics, much more aggressive or coordinated behavior uh, slash gaming. Which, how? Okay, mute. It's like, this is Twitter, man. It's not for these big interviews, but he said, misgendering policy as an example, using ML to downrank bad actors behind interstitials. Not too long ago, but most of our work going forward will have to be product features. Not sure the question. We, will, we put an entire model in place into minimizing gaming the system. Okay. First, I want to say this. You can see what I have on the screen. It's impossible. It's, it's, it's impossible to do what Jack thinks he's doing. And he's being beaten down by one group of, uh, of political actors who just have enough of themselves to create pressure. You'll notice that when it comes to advocating for certain policies on Twitter, we don't see other kin demanding policies protecting them. If you're not familiar with other kin, they're people who believe they're mythical animals or animals. So they'll say things like they're dragon kin, right? That means they're secret. They're like, uh, I don't know a whole lot about it. Forgive me, other kin, if I'm misrepresenting your views, but I believe it's like they have this, they're the reincarnation of a legendary dragon in the body of a human, and they associate themselves with different species. So if, can you miss species someone, right? I understand there's a difference between transgender and other kin. Absolutely. It's a big difference, right? Transgender people are real. Other kin are very different. But the point I'm trying to make is where do you stop? Who is allowed protections and why? Now let's go through my tweet. According to Jack's uh, response to Kara Swisher, I said, conservatives believe that calling a trans woman a woman is misgendering. Progressives believe calling a trans woman a man is misgendering. Twitter enforces policy based on the progressive ideology. Jack confirms they have a bias and enforce rules based on their bias. Let's break this down because some people have criticized. What, what do I mean? Conservatives, you know, misgendering. First of all, conservatives typically don't use the word misgender, but misgender has a meaning. Misgender is when you attribute the wrong pronoun to an individual based on their gender. Therefore, most conservatives, probably, uh, maybe not all, maybe not even, but I'm pretty sure it's most, you know, Ben Shapiro goes on great, talks about this in great lengths, believe that your gender is your biological gender, right? It's, it's, it correlates to your sex. Therefore, a trans woman who was born male would use male pronouns because they are born male. Everything beyond that is something different. You can call a trans woman a trans woman, but they are biologically males. Therefore, conservatives would call them men. They believe you're applying the wrong gender pronoun to an individual just because uh, to, to a, a biological male if they're tran- a trans woman. Progressives are, you know, believes other things. They believe gender is a social construct and therefore a trans woman is a woman. Now, ultimately, you can fall on one side of this. There, there's no real middle ground for the most part. I mean, some people just say, leave me out of it. I'm not going to get involved. But the reality is conservatives fall on one side, progressives fall on the other. How will Twitter enforce its misgendering policy? Is Twitter going to say, now Twitter says misgendering is against the rules, but does Twitter say, how dare you imply a biological male is actually a woman? No, they do the inverse. They take the progressive side of the issue. And now I'm going to do something that's going to get me a lot of trouble because people are already claiming this post was transphobic. Listen, if I can't try to explain how people feel about the issue without being called transphobic, I don't know what we're going to do as a society other than accept there's a massive rift and we're doomed. Because if, the only, if you can't talk about it, where do you end up? This is a fact. Conservatives tend to believe this. Tend to. This is a fact. Progressives, pretty much most or all progressives believe this, or they'll call you a fake progressive if you don't. There still are feminists who are trans-exclusionary. Now let's play the, uh, 
Now, now let's go to the part where people are uh, on the left will get mad at me, but it's, it, it has to happen. This is Wikipedia. Wikipedia says a man is a male human. This is also Wikipedia. A woman is a female human being. Oh, does it say human being? It doesn't say human being, it says male human. Now, male is defined as an organism. A male organism is the physiological sex that produces sperm. They say female is the sex of an organism or part of the organism that produces non-mobile ova. There's very specific understandings of what man and fe- uh, man and woman mean. And Wikipedia defines male and female as being um, man and woman as being male and female. The reason this is particularly important is, God damn it, it's going to, I'm going to have to zoom in <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit this part. The reason this is important is in the mainstream community, right, to the regular average person who's not politically engaged, there is a general understanding of what man and woman means, period. That's it. That's full stop. This ideology being enforced by Jack is very specific to a small progressive sect of individuals, admittedly one that's growing in power and entering politics. But for the time being, the average person does not agree with Jack. Now, I'm sure the average person probably wouldn't want to be involved and probably would just call people whatever they want to be called. But as long as the general community that edits Wikipedia says, listen, this is the scientific consensus. This is where we are then Jack is on the wrong side of science, period. I understand you can claim that, you know, Wikipedia isn't uh, a good source. No, no, no. Wikipedia is an aggregate. And the community for now believes this. Regardless of whether or not you want to agree with Wikipedia, it shows you that a very large, substantial amount of people hold that view more than what you hold, Jack. Now, we'll look at some of the the, the criticisms here uh, or, or some of the additions because we have the Defend Assange campaign. I believe this Twitter account used to be Julian Assange's account. I don't know who runs it. They say it's much worse than that. It engages in serious global cultural imperialism, demanding that distant and delicately balanced cultures follow its provincial cultural standards without regard as to the effect. E.g., there's not even consensus in the U.S. about the cultural norms of misgendering, those who claim to be transgendered. To expect Pakistanis or Poles, or in fact anyone in 192 other countries, to follow the latest San Francisco provincial fad is speech censorship. in speech censorship codes is imperious. That's a particularly left anti-establishment approach to it, but it's a good point. Twitter enforces rules based on American, I'm sorry, based on San Francisco cultural standards, not even American cultural standards. So people are being banned in foreign countries for things that are completely normal in their cultures. That's really good for America and Western culture, but you got at some point, right? (laughs) At some point you can recognize why does someone in Pakistan have to abide by our cultural norms? It's tough, isn't it? So there's more. Someone responded, where has anyone ever claimed that calling a trans woman a woman is misgendering them? Does this just stem from the fact most on that side can't grasp that gender in in context is referring to identity, not sex as determined by birth? And I responded to this with, conservatives overwhelmingly believe gender is immutable and pronouns based on biology. Therefore, calling someone biologically male a woman would be misgendering. Wikipedia agrees with conservatives. Twitter agrees with progressives. And uh, this Twitter user, Bideo uh, Hojima, says that conservatives overwhelmingly don't actually care. Right. The bigger issue is not whether or not you want to be called whatever you want to be called. It's whether or not someone will be banned for refusing to call you what you want. But there's another uh, there's another response from someone who said, Tim, the difference is that overwhelming the overwhelming majority of us trans women want to be called women. It has nothing to do with ideology and everything to do with what we want. I don't care what the progressives or the right want, only how I want to be addressed. Agreed. And I will address you in, in whatever way makes sense in the circumstance. And it's very complicated. There was that GameStop video where the, the trans woman was yelling, it's ma'am. It went viral. Um, I, I, I want to say this, you know, first and foremost, you've probably seen the video. And I feel really bad for that person. Look, it sucks when a video about you doing something silly or wrong goes viral. And that, it's, it's, it's a damn shame. I mean, the Internet has made things extremely stressful and, and tre- uh, treacherous. Well, maybe not treacherous, but... Um, it, it's overly sensitive, right? You're, it's, it's really easy to upset the social fabric and have everyone come down on you. So in that regard, I think it's, we, we should probably leave certain people alone. Like let people make mistakes, forgive them, forget, right? Let's forgive and forget what they used to say. But that's a good example of someone demanding other people use words they want. You can't do that, right? You can't scream at someone what they should call you and then, and then, stomp around knocking things over and kicking things and then complaining. It's I'm sorry. What you want is not you don't always get what you want. And from this tweet, 
Yes, I understand you want to be called something. I have no problem calling you that. But Twitter is banning people because they're not giving you what you want. I take issue with people calling me names too. Is Twitter going to ban people for mispoliticizing me? At what point do we stop assigning protections? Okay, you want to protect the trans community. I can respect that. What about the political political community? What about individuals of certain political persuasions? I, I think anybody who misparties me should be banned. It's offensive and it's harassment. When people go on Twitter and claim I'm a conservative and then lead harassment campaigns against me, why won't Twitter ban them? But back to my other point, what about other kin? At what point will Twitter, at what point is Twitter going to say, you know, what, we'll extend protections to everybody? You can't. The only thing you can do is stop now and realize the world is the way it is. Maybe Twitter needs to implement a public verification system so that people can have non-anonymous accounts, like their identified accounts, and then you can say, block all non-verified. When everyone has the ability to verify who they are, look, I understand, and I think anonymity is fine, but I also understand the online disinhibition effect, that people who are anonymous just do whatever they want, and even people who are verified seem to do whatever they want. The interactions I have with some of these people in, in public is very different. Ultimately, the point is, what I wanted to highlight this and some of the issues around it. I know I've talked about it before, but... This is the very simple way to explain the bias of Twitter that I think Jack doesn't even understand. So anyway, I'm going to wrap up there. Stick around. I'll have another video coming up in a few minutes, and I will see you then.